We're still talking about Coulomb's law, and now we'll bring up the topic of elementary charge. One electron has a certain charge, and all the electrons are the same. Every electron in the universe is identical, and it has a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th Coulombs, and the sign is negative because electrons are negatively charged. But this amount, without the negative sign, this amount of charge, that many Coulombs, is referred to as the elementary charge. And it's given the symbol E. Uh, little e is equal to that. So little e stands for the amount of charge on one electron. So when you see E there, you think electron. That's the amount of charge on one electron. It's also the amount of charge on one proton. And we just understand that the charge on the electron is negative and the charge on the proton is positive. But as far as how much charge there is, it's that much, that many coulombs in either case. And we, we call that E, the elementary charge. Now, this is not the same E that you might have seen in math class. When you get to Algebra 2, you run into this number called E. It's a special number that shows up in the natural world, kind of like pi. Um, this is not the same E. It's spelled the same, but that's it. That E is a number in math class, and this E is a number that shows up uh, when we talk about electricity. It's the amount of charge on one electron. Now, you might remember that something has charge if it has extra electrons or if it has an electron deficiency. That is, an, object's char an object is charged by gaining or losing electrons. And an object can only gain or lose a whole number of electrons. So you can have one extra electron on an object, or two extra electrons on an object, or three, but you can't ever put one and a half electrons onto an object. You cannot charge something by putting 3.47 extra electrons on the object. Electrons always come in, in um, whole number amounts. They can't be divided. In other words, an electron is what we call an elementary particle. It can't be split up into subparticles. So the charge, this amount of charge, can't be split up either. So if you have an object that is charged, it has some protons and some electrons, but more of one than the other. The net charge on the object has to be an integer multiple of E, this number. And so charge only exists in discrete amounts. It only exists in 1E or 2E or 3E or 4E or so on. Charge is said to be quantized. And that means you can't just pick any number for a charge. You can't just say, I want to have this much charge and pick, up, pick any number. It has to be a multiple of E. Charge only comes in whole number multiples of E. And that's what it means to be quantized. It's not like the number line, for example. If you picture the number line, and you say 0 and 1 and 2 and 3 and so on, and the negative numbers this way, you can imagine any number you want on the number line. And way down here, real close to 0, you could imagine the number 1.3 times 10 to the negative 50th. That's a number, and it's on the number line. It's right there, really close to 0, but not quite 0. But you can't have this much charge. You can't have a charge that small. Charge only comes in sizes this small and no smaller. So every charge you have is going to be charge E or some multiple of E. So charge, you can have you can have this much charge or that much or that much, but you can't have any number of uh, for your amount of charge, like you can have any number on the number line. So in your mind, you can contrast the word quantized to the word continuous. We say that the number line is a continuum. Uh, you can have any number and there's no gaps or no holes or no spaces on the real number line. But charge is quantized. It only comes in discrete amounts. Okay, let's work an example problem. Here we're given two protons and we're told they're this far apart. 2.65 times 10 to the negative tenth meters. And we're told to find the electrostat electrostatic force between them. Well, we're just going to use this equation. K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. And K is 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared. And the charge on one proton and on the other is the elementary charge. It's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th Coulombs. 
and you could write it out twice 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs because that's q1 and q2 or you could just write it once and write it that number squared same thing but it's all that divided by this distance squared so we divide by 2.65 times 10 to the negative tenth meters squared and we put all that into the calculator and we end up with an answer 3.28 times 10 to the negative ninth newtons and so this 10 to the, 10 to the negative ninth is billionths so it's 3.28 billionths of a newton that's the electrostatic force between two protons at that very tiny distance